This is the Vivo X70 Pro Plus. Vivo's new flagship seems like it's arriving smack dab in the middle of a cycle, or like it's coming way too early. While it has some new features like IP68 protection and stereo speakers, does it have enough new features to really set it apart from its predecessor? I'm Angie for GSM Marina, and this is our review of the Vivo X70 Pro Plus. The X70 Pro Plus is a unique looking device. Vivo's premium design language is all rectangles and squares. Vivo is really owning their camera setup with this one, and it's the focal point at the back. There's a shiny surface here that can actually serve as a mirror if you decide to take a rear camera selfie. That's a clever and unusually low-tech solution. The frame is aluminum and the IR blaster at the top of the phone is a nice surprise. On the front, the optical fingerprint reader works quickly and accurately, even though it sits a bit too low for our taste. This is the first Vivo that we're seeing with IP68 rated protection, and honestly, it's been long overdue. The phone also has a bigger size than before. The X60 Pro Plus had the unusual combination of a compact body and a high-end camera setup. Well, with the X70 Pro Plus, they went all out size-wise. This comes with the benefit of a larger screen at 6.78 inches. And it's one of the best spec displays on the market. The LTPO AMOLED has support for 1 billion colors. It has HDR10 plus support. It has up to a 120 Hertz refresh rate and it has a QHD resolution. With a max of 1022 nits of max brightness in auto mode, this Vivo has one of the brightest panels in the business. It has three color presets and the professional preset has excellent accuracy. The audio side of things is just as premium as the display. And this is the first Vivo flagship that we're seeing with stereo speakers. It's a conventional setup with a dedicated bottom firing speaker, which is a bit louder and the earpiece as a second channel. Overall, the X70 Pro Plus had very good loudness on our speaker test. And as far as quality is concerned, it's nicely balanced. The X70 Pro Plus has a 4,500 mAh hour battery, which is slightly larger than before. The phone got an 84 hour endurance on our tests. This is good considering the hardware, but most of its top tier competition lasts significantly longer. The phone supports 55 watt wired charging that gets it from 0 to 80% in half an hour and from 0 to 100% in 48 minutes. While it's not a class leading result, it's speedy nonetheless. It seems like this phone has a lot of firsts for a Vivo flagship. And for the first time, we're getting 50 watt wireless charging and reverse wireless charging. There's no card slot on this phone, but base storage has been doubled and it starts at 256 gigabytes. The phone sports the Snapdragon 888 Plus instead of the vanilla 888. Despite the supposed advantages of the former chipset, it's simply on par with other 888 powered devices. We found that under sustained load, it did well, and after around 15 minutes, its performance dropped to around 80% of its initial results and remained that way for the next hour. The international version of this phone has Android 11 with FunTouch OS 12 on top. Many system menus have been tailored towards single-handed use, and you'll find that some menu content has been moved to the lower half of the screen, like the recent apps menu. FunTouch 12 has a very customizable UI. In the dynamic effects submenu, you can change aspects of the home screen, lock screen, animation effects, and the ambient light effect for incoming notifications. There's also a wide variety of always-on display settings. You can also long press the volume down key to launch an app, but this quick action feature doesn't work when playing music. There's an ultra game mode that allows you to avoid disturbances during gameplay, and it also allows you to turn off the screen and keep the game running in the background. There are four cameras on the back, a 50 megapixel main camera, a 40 megapixel ultra wide cam with autofocus, a 12 megapixel telephoto with two times optical zoom, and an eight megapixel periscope telephoto with five times optical zoom. The two telephotos and the main cam have OIS, while the ultrawide camera enjoys Vivo's trademark gimbal stabilization. Overall, it's almost the exact same setup as the X60 Pro Plus. The only difference is the 12 megapixel telephoto, which is actually a slight downgrade from the 32 megapixel sensor on the X60 Pro Plus. During the day, photos were great, 
Colors are vivid, but they don't go overboard. Dynamic range is excellent and there's a good level of detail and things like grass are rendered well. There's some noise, but you won't spot it unless you're looking for it. The two times zoom camera doesn't quite match the main unit's color processing and images are cooler. The dynamic range is still wide and there's good detail and not too much noise. Surprisingly, the five times telephoto is closer to the main camera's output. The photos are sharp and detailed and practically noise free. The ultrawide camera also has lively colors, which really makes the 2x telephoto the odd one out. These are among the better images that we've seen from an ultrawide, and its dynamic range is wide. They're not quite pin sharp though. Since the ultrawide has autofocus, you can use it to capture macro images. If you do, shots will be cropped in to match the main camera's field of view. The shots themselves are respectively sharp and detailed. In low light with the main cam, you get some night mode processing by default. Images have excellent dynamic range and well-developed tonal extremes. The high color saturation is retained, like during the day, but warm street lights look a little too orange sometimes. Detail is very good too. If you turn on the actual night mode, it takes a little longer to capture a shot, but it's one of the fastest ones that we've used. Even so, it's hard to tell the difference between night mode shots and ones captured with the default setting. Two times zoom shots also have this auto night mode behavior and photos are very good with nice highlights and shadows and sharp detail. If you turn on night mode for a two time zoom shot, you'll get more accurate colors under warm lighting, but other than that, there isn't a huge difference. With a five times telecam, there is a bigger contrast though. Photo mode will actually get you sharper images and you'll get the same great exposure, dynamic range and colors. With the ultra wide, there's no real difference between photo and night mode. And as a whole, we like the photos. Dark scenes are exposed brightly enough and light sources are well contained. We appreciate the vibrant colors too. The 32 megapixel front snapper captures shots at its full resolution. They have plenty of detail, likable colors that aren't quite as vivid as the main camera on the back and good dynamic range. The X70 Pro Plus can record videos up to 8K at 30 FPS with the main cam, while the ultrawide goes up to 4K at 60 and the tele cameras max out at 1080p at 30 FPS. 8K videos are meh. Dynamic range is good and colors are nice, but detail is soft and there is a noticeable crop. It makes much more sense to capture videos with the main camera in 4K. There's the same good dynamic range in colors, but detail is much better. If you zoom in two times and want 4K footage, it'll be cropped from the main camera. It's good and has the benefit of having the same colors as regular footage. If you zoom in with the actual telephoto, it's good full HD footage, but it'll have different colors like it has with photos. If you zoom in five times in full HD, you'll get footage from the periscope camera and it's solid quality with good detail, vivid colors, and wide dynamic range. 4K footage with the ultrawide is also great and you'll capture footage with top level sharpness, punchy colors, and good dynamic range. In low light, the main camera captures decent 4K footage. Colors retain their vividness, exposure is bright enough, and the dynamic range is reasonably wide. If you zoom in two times, videos don't look amazing, but it's usable footage. The ultrawide struggles in low light, but if the scene isn't too dark, it might do the trick. In 4K, stabilization works great on the main camera. With the ultrawide, it's even better thanks to the gimbal action. The Vivo X70 Pro Plus is around 15% more expensive than its predecessor, and it's not nearly as compact. That said, it gets a bigger screen, it improves the camera features, and it gets a bunch of stuff that we missed on the X60 Pro Plus model. Here you have water resistance, stereo speakers, wireless charging, and even an IR blaster. The Vivo is up against the iPhone 13 Pro Max and the Galaxy S21 Ultra, which are both significantly more expensive. But no matter which of these three phones you end up getting, you will be shelling out quite a bit of money. The Vivo has a solid camera setup, a beautiful display, and a standout design. If you value the new features that it brings to the table, then it's definitely worth considering. Either way, we recommend it. Thank you for watching everyone, stay safe, and I'll see you guys next time.